In this video series, I survived for a few days in the Amazon jungle with its indigenous habitants, a shaman and another member of the Yukuna tribe, who after being forced to join the Colombian army and live in the cities, decided to go back to their roots with life in the jungle. I ate like them, slept like them, and even studied a bit of their language. Join me as I learn about their culture, heritage, and traditions before they disappear. So we're now going to be picking coca leaves. Coca leaves. And making them into a mush. Yeah. Into a powder. We need to pick the green ones, okay? This is a coca. Yeah, oh, it's a coca. Yeah, we're gonna pick the leaves and put them in the basket here. Don't pick the top, look, like that. Don't pick the top one. The top one, mm -hmm. like this. This top, down below you. Go ahead, there is the basket. There's the top. Okay. Okay. You mean all the coke plants, the government keeps track of them? Yes, they know where the cocaine business are, but you know, co corruption, they pay money, that's why they don't bother them. But once they stop paying, they go boom. Right. Burn and everything. But for them, look, this is not like, this is just very small. No, this is not a commercial amount, so exactly. it's legal to grow it's it just for tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can either make tea or they can make the, the powder. But they still look. Yeah, not much. Yeah. Not much. She don't lie, she don't lie, she don't lie. Cocaine. On top of the pan, because we're gonna dry the leaves. Yeah, we're gonna dry them with a the fire, yeah? Mm -hmm. In the previous videos, we collected special branches in order to make a replacement for salt. Sal de Mont, as they call it, or mountain salt in English. We burnt it, and then... This is the branches that we picked up yes. yesterday, and now he's picking out... Yes. The salty pots? Yes. What do the salty pots look like? In the ashes, what said at the bottom is going to be white. That is what will turn into the salt. The water, while it's on top, you have to bail it out or throw it. Then you have to ground it and then dry. And that is the salt, natural salt. So he doesn't need to go to Leticia or a big city to buy salt or mm -hmm. to be by the mountains to, far, to find a salt. Last time he made it, he made it with rain water. But I think this time, because he didn't have a chance to collect the knot, he's using river water. So he's going to pour in here everything, whatever drops, is going to be just water and a flower from the ashes, what he burned. Then he's going to wait for a little bit and at the bottom he's just going to set down. And what is going to be left, you're going to see a white thing at the bottom of the container with the water that will dry out like flour and then he's going to take the water out and the, what is left that is what we call the salt they use the salt to preserve their meat and stuff meat like that and all kind of stuff the same as, as the uh, same as we use salt yeah, yeah the same as we use salt because you can't survive without salt humanity can't survive without salt hundreds of years ago salt was more valuable than gold because because it's necessary to preserve meat before there were refrigerators all sorts of stuff it's the only spice that you can't live without. You can't live without sugar. Yes, yeah, right. Why sugar? Because sugar you can find in watermelon and all sorts yeah, of stuff. In the fruit. In fruits. In fruits yeah. Without salt, you'll die. Also, and mm. also on the honey from the bees. Here are tall trees. If you walk inside, you just need to keep your hearing good. When you hear like concentration of bees, just look. Maybe it's a honey over there, a honey bee. Usually it's wasps, but... No, bees. Yeah. Bees, but normally what you find close to the ground are wasps. Yeah. The honey is normally up on the maybe 10 meters on the trees and they have to chop it down sometimes. But sometimes these uh, bee nests are like outside. It looks like a termite, but round shape with mm. pitcher mouth. And you can see over there all the bees flying around. So here we put the pots under.
it's like mosquito repellent. That's because your hands. Yeah, I know. And he's reusing the same water to make it more distilled. This is the second process after collecting the coca leaves. We make the fire, and this is the the big pan where we put all the leaves. What he's doing now, he is in the process of drying, drying the leaves. We need the leaves to be really dry and to be able to put it in the next container to start grounding. This is going to be approximately 20 minutes, depending on the fire working. Let's try the coca leaf. The dry one, yeah. This is relatively dry. Doesn't taste like nothing, it's just a bit better. It's bitter because it's still the alkaloid. It's better because it's still with alcohol. It's still with alcohol. It's cocaine. It's coca leaf. Yeah. And uh, when it's in the next process, that's going to be mixed with ash. The ash is from the jarumo. It's going to help to put it down, reduce the alcohol from the coca leaf. Right. Yeah. Then the taste and flavor is going to be different. We're burning the leaves now. Yeah. Because we're going to mix the ashes with the coca plant. Do you know what plant this specifically is? It's called uh, Jarumo. Right. Jarumo. Jarumo. Like, uh, you see in front of us, like 50 meters away, the white one. Oh, the taller one, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Those are the leaves, the dry leaves. Oh, okay. And it burns really fast. Yes. Yeah. Sí, me entendí, sí. If I can grind it well, it means that I'm a good, I'm good in bed, yeah? Vamos a ver si estoy bueno en bed. En la cama. Rola is a Colombian word for a lady from Bogotá. And the shaman was convinced all this time that I have a girlfriend in Bogota. Otherwise, it will make no sense to him why I would go back there. Good. I don't make the powder to come out. Okay. Hit it, hit it in the middle. Don't hit it on the side. Yeah. No, like that. See, look, look his technique. Look his technique. Look his technique. Look his technique. Okay. Like this. Despacio, suave. Yes, yes. We don't want to kill the ladies. Exactly, yes. Exactly, yes. Exactly, yes. Exactly, yes. Exactly, <laughs> Smells like grass. Now look, that's the ashes from the leaves. That's what you are saying. So basically, that's how he's getting rid of the wood and and rocks and small stuff in the ashes and extracting only the powder. Yeah. So now we're going to do it again with uh, the ashes. Now that's with the ashes. Go ahead. Remember the technique. So we've now finished making the coca leaves into powder. And we're all going to, we're all supposed to try it together. It's been four times grounded, yeah? Yes. And remember that it was mixed with the uh, Yarumo ashes. I'm taking it small because I still have it. Yeah, you're supposed to keep it in your mouth for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Bola, bola. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 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 
מגעיל. מגעיל רצח. You need to put uh, not a full spoon, maybe half, half a month. Yeah. And uh, we, when we normally started the first time, we said put it under your tongue. And then close your mouth and with your saliva, just try to mix a little bit. But don't talk. Don't talk right. because remember, this is powder. If you talk <coughs> and inhale, this is going to come to your throat and then dry. Then yeah, you're like gonna cinnamon. Be, you're going to be like suffocated, you know. Like and back then, in the day when people used to yes. do the cinnamon challenge. Yeah. Yes, and then if that is happening, you can drink water and then that's it. Yeah. You're good. But, you know, the idea is to store it on your cheek. Right. To keep it as long as you can. Right. Because gently portions, what you get, is what is going to give you energy. Mm -hmm. And according to the belief in here, this will open your mind give you like a, a give you like a connection right you know that's why they use the mamba and the rape but this is just what we're finishing tonight when we sit down and talk to him he's gonna give us to try right the rape as well both together just to be able to be awake to have the concentration to be able to talk and try to share a bit of uh, what he has right yeah, let's do it. don't talk until you get it in your cheek Right, I suppose I have it in my cheek now. It doesn't taste like much, it tastes a bit like a mint. It tastes quite minty. I don't know how I can keep it in my cheek for so long and talk to the camera. I don't feel much. I do feel a bit um more awake, I suppose. Hmm. אני בלעתי היה לי בסדר, לא? לא, בהתחלה שזה דאב קטי. אה. כאילו, בכל פעם שעשיתי זה לא... זה לא הרגשתי פתאום אנשים שאני... כאילו סעדתי ולקחתי נשימה. כן. זה היה זול לנשום. אני חושב שאני אגיד לך קצת יותר קוקה ליבס, כי אני אשמח את כל זה. Yeah, this time I managed to store it in my cheek so I can talk proper. So since I'm concluding my stay here, I thought you could explain uh, about which tribe they came from. Yukuna, Yukuna. Yukuna are people that are dispersed in the middle of the Amazon. Uh, some of them near to the Caqueta River. And uh, to reach that place is not close. Maybe if uh, in the future someone is willing to know or get an idea in the map, you can look and you can find it. If you look in the map, you can see that it's very close, but it's not easy. That is just only a reference. It's what we are talking about to give an idea. Because from there, maybe not that close, maybe from there, like in between, there is like a small river where right. you will have to navigate and then a uh, stream where you will have to navigate then walk hours till you find the right community where they are placed. But to reach the places is not easy because as uh, any other indigenous in the Amazon, they are really afraid of what they call as mestizos or white people because they believe, and that's true as well, I believe it, that we can transmit the other kind of uh, diseases for them because they don't have any vaccines. No vaccines for yellow fever, for COVID, yeah. yellow typhoid, and uh, you know all kind of uh, problems that we have. Just with a simple cough, you can kill them. But knowing that they have all different kind of plants where they can use it for survival and use it as a medicine, which is true. But, you know, they still been afraid of seeing people, mm. of uh, seeing what we're going to take or show them. So this family, what we're meeting here, uh, they are right now they are alone here because we see they are uh, building their maloca. Their right. Maloca. And uh, from here, not too far away, there is a trail going on that direction, maybe like on a very slow pace walking. I would say like in two hours. Over there, there is a small community. The community is like uh, about 400 people. But yeah. these are indigenous Yukunas, mixed also with the uh, Huitotos, mixed also with the uh, Jaguas, but they are not completely 100% pure black. They still been indigenous, but they are already mixed 50%. They and are wearing and we also, we can't just visit them, right? Yeah. Because they won't be happy to see white people. Yes, exactly. And uh, when you go to visit them, they are not really knowing what does it mean tourism. Right. Because, you know, this is just a little bit of a first step what they are doing. 
we are trying to uh, teach visitors to go visit them and learn about their cultural issues, about tradition, about the uh, histories, about knowledge what they have, because it's very, very important because these are kind of data that you don't find it in the internet, in Google, you don't find it like uh, in uh, books that you can go to the library. It's right. something that is very little, little known about it. And uh, just to sit and talk to them and just make them happy that you are here and they can open their heart and share what they have, what they know, it's something very interesting, you know, and yes. You were telling me about the shaman's age because previously when I was here alone, I asked him his age, he told me tomorrow I'm 50. Mm -hmm. So actually, these people don't know when they were born. For them all the time, is uh, they're 50. Yeah. They're 50. And he's probably in his 60s. Yes. Yeah, he's in the 60s now because uh, I met him like uh, 10 years ago, as first time. Yeah. And uh, he told me that he was 50. Right. 50, yes. And then uh, by, by, you know, a different job I had, I left, but now I'm coming back visiting him, visiting him again. And he said, tomorrow is going to be his birthday. He's going to be 50 again. I'm like, uh, oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, but you know. Yeah, Do you know it, your age? Because you're also an indigenous Peruvian. Yes, indigenous Peruvian. But you know, uh, I, I, my parents, uh, they were mestizos already as well. But my background, they are indigenous. Right. And uh, you know, uh, they just took me to the hospital. You know, we have something called a birth certificate of birth, you know. Birth certificate, yeah. Birth certification. And according to that, I was registered at the right time, at the right moment. And oh. according to that, I can tell you my age. But for them, it's difficult because they were registered maybe later, maybe before they went into the military service. Yeah. So. And was this military service, I assume you were 30-something? Yes. And your parents were in the Peru-Colombian War? Yes. In the 30s, in yes. the 1930s? Yes. yes, right. After the 30s, people started being born in hospitals and knowing yes. their date of birth. Yes. Yeah. yes, but before that, they were using midwife. A midwife was like the oldest person, the elder in the community. Yeah. The one that was given the childbirth assistance yeah. for all the delivery. Oh, and according yes. to that, they would know the age. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Now it's a little bit different because you need to have the birth certification. Now, yeah. because when you go to put kids in the school, they will ask for that thing first. Or uh, when you get a passport or something, yes, if you want a, a Colombian passport, you travel, you need your yes. birth certificate. Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. And for that, this kind of things, it's uh, a little bit important. Uh, the indigenous that are living very close to the city of Leticia, they are going to the school, but the school is bilingual. Right. Bilingual. As well, in the indigenous language? In the indigenous. And Spanish. Yeah. yeah, in Spanish. Why is Do you know because any of the indigenous languages? Yes, Witoto. Witoto. Yes, so you're from the Witoto tribe. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, you know it's very important for them Spanish and then the original language. Why? Because if they wanted to go to a little farther studies, like to the university, for indigenous, the government is giving them free education. Okay. You don't have to pass any tests. Your test is just show them that you speak the dialect, the language. Right. But you have to prove it that they're speaking and writing. But yeah. the, in these cases, the writing is not important because most of this indigenous group, they don't have uh, the grammar. Mm. The grammar is because uh, grammatically, most of them, they are related linguistically. And so there's I, very little differences, but they understand each other. I suppose that the government is making initiatives to integrate the indigenous people in society. And that's why education is free. Yes, that's right. Thanks, Thank man. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this. this no. like we this. do like this. You yeah, do like no, this, yeah? No, we do like this first. Yeah. And then. All right, got you. <laughs> yes.